so I think we're ready to start working on a new saddle for this. I'm fairly certain the old one actually fits fairly snugly in here, um, despite being way too short. So I can use it for thickness and length measurements because it's easier to pull them off of the saddle than it is to pull them off of the slot. So we're looking at about 95 thousandths thick. It has some variance in there, but it's it, it's about 95 thousandths of an inch. So I'll write that down. And then length, we want roughly that. Uh, two inches, 832 thousandths. Now what I can do just to make sure is put this actually in the slot. And that fits really snug. There's no, no room in there. So I know that that's exactly how long I'm going to want the saddle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a full height uh, blank that fits in here now. So I'll thin it down to 95 thousandths and shorten it to that 2 inches, 832 thousandths of an inch. So that it fits perfectly in that slot but sits really tall. And then we'll work on the actual, actual height. So I'll go find a blank and we'll start shaping it down. So I've shaved one down to thickness now. Um, you can see it fits in that slot. The next thing to do will be to cut it to length, but I have a little safety tip. If you're gonna do any shaping on bone, you really wanna get you one of these. Um, that dust is really, really, really not good for you. Um, that's kind of why I didn't bother filming this uh, this part, the shaving it down. It's a lot of setup for me to get ready to shave it down anyway, and I don't need the extra setup of setting up the camera. But anyways, it's been uh, it's now the proper thickness to fit in the slot. I just gotta cut it off. So we'll go ahead and get ready to do that. That shouldn't take much. So I cut it off a little bit long. Um, that way I can go take it to the disc sander and just knock off that little bit. And I cut it off so I didn't have to just run this much through the disc sander and gum up my uh, disc. So this should work pretty well. I need to basically take it down to just before that line and then round the corners off so that it'll fit in the rounded uh, end of the slot. And we should be looking good. So now that we've got this cut to the right length and the edges rounded over, it'll go into the saddle slot nice and perfect now. And it's nice and snug, it doesn't wiggle. You can actually pick the guitar up by it, but yet you can still get it out of there. So now what I need to worry about is getting the proper radius across the uh, top of here. What I'm gonna do is just basically copy the old saddle. And I can do that by kind of just setting this here. This is not actually taller. The old one sitting on top of the bridge is not taller than the new saddle. So I can just take the pencil and mark across here. Then I can pull this new saddle out, take it over to the disc sander, put some angle on it, and we can put uh, the radius on this new saddle. I've got a radius on this now. I also have a brake angle on there, um, so it's uh, angled backwards. It's more than 12, less than 15 degrees on that angle. And now basically we have a saddle that's going to be way too tall. Um, that's okay. It's not a huge deal. That means we can start working it back. I think before I really get going, I'm going to do some light intonation shaping. Take a saddle or take a file and, uh, you know, work back the B string because it almost always needs to be brought back 
um, just to get it kind of in the ballpark. Obviously, I'll do some fine intonation later. But this will help get me started and it's a lot easier as I have more saddle to hold on to. I don't always do some uh, light intonation at this point, but I think this is going to just help us out a little bit in the long run. And I can look at the old saddle and kind of get an idea about where it was. But I think we can think about maybe putting some strings back on here and seeing where it actually gets set up perfectly. Um, it may be about time to do that. So let me make sure that's what I want to do and then we can maybe string this thing back up. So I was stringing this back up, but I'm noticing how tall it's going to be. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just knock some bulk off of the bottom of this. Um, it's pretty crazy high. I'll take, you know, somewhere 25, 30 thousandths off the bottom of this. Uh, just to just to get us in a more measurable range So I'll bring you back after I've done that and you'll notice that it's gonna be shorter I wanted to do a little clip here just so you didn't come back and I had the strings on it and suddenly the saddle was shorter So I'm gonna shorten it a little bit before we really get measuring on here um, Just to get us in a more reasonable spot. So I'll bring you back once we're strung back up for sure so I've had a little gap in recording on this particular guitar, so I'm going to have to kind of remind myself where I was. But I'm pretty sure the last thing I did was take some bulk off of the saddle to get it a little closer to where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just string it up. I think it's going to be, you know, reasonably close. Well, I broke a string while I was tuning this up, so I don't really get a real accurate measurement here, but I did just want to quickly check to see where we were to make sure we were kind of in the ballpark. Um, you know, once again, wildly inaccurate because of a different string tension on the neck, but we're at about 110 on the low E. And about 90 on the high E, which really is not bad. That's, um, you know, I... I say it's not bad. That's higher than anyone would want to play it. But there's not much adjustment that needs to be made to get it right where we want it to be. Um, once again, that's not a totally accurate measurement with a broken string because that changes the, uh, the pull. So I'm going to have to put some new strings on this, tune it back up. Um, something that I can look at real quick, which is going to be hard to show you, is Nut height looks really good. It doesn't seem to be a problem there. Um, at this end, it doesn't really look all that high. I could check, but I'm not sure it's really worth doing anything with. The other only thing that I may want to do is uh, lubricate the nut to make sure everything's moving through there well. That could be one of the reasons I got a broken string. So now I get to loosen these all up, take these all off, put a new set of strings on here, which is not a bad thing. It really didn't need it. I was just trying to get as far as I could on these old ones. So I'll go ahead and take care of that, and I'll bring you back once I've got uh, the new set of strings on here, I suppose. So if you ever have any tuning issues, one of the first things to do is to try lubricating the nut. They sell all sorts of stuff that you can do that with, but on the really, really cheap side... You can just take a mechanical pencil and uh, push the lead out a little ways and just run that inside the nut. That'll put some graphite in there which will allow it to move a little smoother. I'll just go ahead and do the last ones. And if you accidentally get some on the top of the nut, the eraser is usually abrasive enough. Just take it off. So that should allow the strings to slide a little bit better if it's maybe a little tight or not totally smooth. Um, even if it is, it usually helps just a little bit. So I can finish stringing this thing up with new strings. So uh, I've got the new strings on here. I just got finished tuning them up <clears throat> so we can check the string height on here. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're sitting 
about 120 thousandths of an inch, just a little high. And like exactly 100 thousandths of an inch on that side. So I think for starters, we're going to take off. Well, if I take off 40 thousandths at this side and 45 thousandths at this side, that should get us in the uh, about 80 thousandths here and about 95, 97 thousandths of an inch on this side. Um, that's going to be a little high. I may overshoot that a little bit. I just I don't want to take too much off and get the saddle way too low. I want to be able to really look at this. I don't think that's going to be a problem. We have some saddle left. So I guess um, it's going to be about 40 thousandths to about 45, 50 thousandths on the base side. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. We'll get this thing set up. There's still a few things I need to do after we're really set up. So I'm just going to take care of this. I probably won't film a lot of doing the saddle. I've filmed that several, several times. Um, I'll get it taken care of, bring it back, string it up, see where it's at. So, we just finished tuning this back up. So we can check the string height on it one more time. Oh, just like, barely over 90. That's, that's fine. I think it's just a hair under 80. That's that's looking really good for a guitar I was worried about on uh, neck angle or uh, belly bulge. So I think we're doing good there. Um, we still need to check the intonation in regards to setup, but I'm gonna kind of shift away for that, shift away from that for a little bit. I want to look at the end pin. Um, I think I had shown this earlier that it's. Uh, you know, it used to have a pickup in there, so you can see it has a filler piece around it. It's also unbelievably loose. Like, I can push it in there as hard as I can, but it just comes out. Um, I'm a little worried about this because, you know, the purpose of this is to put a strap on here, and if it's not going to hold, you're going to end up with a guitar on the floor. So we're going to do something about this, and I don't really just want to stick something in there to shim it. Um, you know, if you were looking for a quick fix, you could uh, like wrap this in paper or shove some paper in the hole and stick it in there, and that would probably friction fit it well enough, but I was thinking something a little more permanent than that. So I'm going to start taking a look at this and seeing how I want to go about fixing that. The other thing I want to do is if we're going to end up with a uh, wood filler piece, I'd like to dye it a darker color or maybe put some finish over top of it so it doesn't quite stick out so much because I think that that mahogany there stands out way, way, way too much. So I'm going to look at it a little bit and see what I think it needs and we'll go from there. So I think the problem I found here is this insert is only about an eighth inch thick. You can kind of see the shadow there and then it just drops away. So that's the only part that's grabbing the end pin and it's just not making enough friction to keep it from popping out too easy. And when it's something like the end pin and you really need it to stay in there for it to be, you know, playable with a strap, you really need it to be good. So I think what I'm going to have to do is drill this out and put a whole new insert in that goes, you know, at least the full depth of the, the block or as close as I can get. And then we'll just make a new hole for the end pin. I'm thinking that's what's going to have to happen. Um, this, the depth of this is just not enough to hold this tightly. So that's where we're going to go, I think. So I tried drilling this out a time or two and I'm having trouble doing it without, you know, I, it doesn't want to center very well because the hole is already there. What I could do is fill the hole and then drill the whole thing out, but that seems like extra steps for something I'm going to drill out. What I'm going to try is to use a chisel and just knock it out, break it out best I can.
So hopefully we can open up the hole this way. And then probably just take the actual half inch bit and just clean it up. It's a little hard to do holding it in a way that you can see what's going on. So I'm going to try to finish this up with this and then just clean it up and then show you where I'm at. So I just got done cleaning this out. Um, as soon as I turned the camera off, it all came out really easy. That's how it always works. Um, I cleaned it out with the half inch drill bit. Before I couldn't really get the half inch drill bit in there because because of the little hole it would just kind of wander around. But after I got most of that stuff out, the half inch drill bit actually just fit in the hole so it went in just fine. I've already made a plug out of mahogany. Um, this mahogany, in case you were wondering, actually came off of Troy's guitar build, the cutoffs. Um, you know, I've still got all that cutoff wood from doing that. So I use it for stuff like this. This is a really high quality mahogany wood, which, you know, for a tiny little plug probably doesn't matter. Um, but to some people it does, that sort of thing. Putting some glue in there. I've got some glue on the plug. I'm just going to try to spin it. It's getting tight. I'm going to get the hammer out. Got a rubber end on my hammer. That ought to be really good. I'll clean up that glue and then we'll let that sit for, oh, probably about an hour to get totally hard. And then we can work on shaping the hole for the end pen. So I gave this plenty of time to set up. I kind of shaved off the end there so it was a little closer to flush and it's feeling pretty good. Um, I went ahead and took my awl and put a dot basically at the center so that I can take a uh, center point bit and just drill that out. This bit is actually smaller than the small end of the uh, end pin, so it shouldn't really let it go in. And we can work on tapering it up with something else. So I'm just gonna drill this as straight as I can. And then, yeah, you can see there, that's not gonna go in, but I can start to work my reamer in. I don't wanna take too much off, but I'll do that until I can get it in a little ways. Um, and then we'll start working on actually shaping the end pin to perfectly fit the hole. So, just a little bit of this. So I kind of got carried away and went ahead and finished the end pin. I actually changed it out with another end pin that had a bigger uh, base around it. So you can't see the plug at all. Um, I'll keep the original end pin with the case just in case the uh, customer wants it. But I think that's looking really good. Now what we need to do, and I think it's the last thing we need to do, is intonate the saddle. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get my tuner out and make sure this thing is up to pitch. I'll go ahead and put the tuner on this side so hopefully you can see it as I'm going. We'll make sure they're up to pitch. go through and we'll check them at the 12th fret. That high, that, or uh, the low E seems to be really well intonated. We'll check the A. Seems 
seems to be really well intonated as well. We're getting really lucky with this intonation. for it to go away make sure it's actually reading it right. I'm getting a little bit of buzzing. I think it's off the saddle actually. Ah, the high E is sharp. So, if it's sharp, it's too short. The string is too short, so it needs to go back. It is the only one that was off, which means the, uh, the angle that's cut, the angle is cut very, very well for this guitar. Um, that's cool. I really like to see that. That's very good news. Um, I'm getting a little bit of buzzing on the B string, which I think is because the uh, the front of that saddle is not quite cut low enough. It's buzzing off the front. So I need to, because if you remember, I intonated it a little bit off the front. So I need to just cut that a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker down, um, a little bit more sharp of an angle downwards. And then the E string needs to come back a little bit. Just for... It's not super sharp, it's just a little sharp. So I think I'll probably just loosen those two strings. Um, there's no point in doing them all, or taking them all off. I'll loosen those two strings, see if I can't do it from here, and then uh, we'll get it back up. I won't film taking the strings off, I'll make film uh, just a little bit of filing the saddle. Uh, so we'll jump to that. If this saddle were taller, I wouldn't worry about um, doing any tape on here because I'd be fairly certain I'm not gonna hit the bridge. But it's a fairly short saddle because of where the angle is. And, you know, I've, I've talked about that quite a bit. So I am just going to throw a little piece of tape on the front of that bridge. Just so I don't hit the bridge with the file. And then, real careful like, I'm going to come in here and file off the front edge. All right, that's looking really good. I'll just throw those back in there and get us tuned back up. We'll make sure they're good. So we got this back up to pitch and you can see I got rid of my B buzzing and my E. And today's perfectly. Very cool, I'm very glad we got that done. I think this guitar is ready to go. Um, I'm fairly certain we've got everything done on this we needed to do. This was a lot of inspection to make sure everything's really well done on it. Everything's tight. Everything's not loose. Um, ultimately, I think there's a tiny amount of belly bulge in here. Tiny more than it needs. Uh, belly bulge in here. I don't think it's going to really be an issue. It should be playing really well now. Uh, the big improvement has got to be replacing the saddle. Um, getting one piece saddle in there should be really helpful. Taking that unnecessary pickup out, big improvement. Um, we should be good to go. I think I'm going to go get set up to play this. We'll play this and then we can send this thing on home. So I think I'm really happy with this thing. Um, it plays really easy. So I guess I'll play it just a little bit so you can really hear it.
really great guitar. Um, <laughs> I, I've said this before, and I'm not sure if it was this video or part one of this video, but I didn't have a lot of experience with guilds. Um, I'm not sure I've played more than one, but this thing sounds really good. And, you know, coming up to this vintage, it really should. Um, this is a really great guitar, and it's finally playing like a really great guitar. I imagine the customer will be plenty happy with it. Um, I guess we're ready to send it on its way. So I hope you enjoyed watching this real thorough inspection on this guild and a uh, little bit of work on it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. By the way, this video and part one of this video are the first ones I've done with a brand new microphone. So if you've noticed a difference or you'd like to let me know what you think of the new microphone, I'd really appreciate it. I think it's sounding really good, uh, but I'd like to see what everybody else is thinking. So once again, thanks for watching.